Do you have going tonight? Yes. What's just kind of the, the mood in the locker room today? I know you said that yesterday guys were feeling good. It's kind of carried over. Yeah, it's it's carried over today. Starting to get the focus we need for tonight. I thought um, yesterday was a really good day, just kind of getting back, resetting mentally. And yeah, had a quick little practice yesterday. Um, and today's optional again, making sure our energy's up for tonight. Can I ask you about that a little bit? There's yeah. A philosophy with coaches in the past, you know, different thoughts on morning skate. Is the optional something that you're kind of embracing, or is it just kind of lining up that way with the way you guys practice it? No, I'm embracing it. I think it's like we've – some of our guys want to skate, so we're giving them the option to go on. And uh, some guys are implementing other morning routines. Um, Alexi has a lot to do with that, our strength coach. Some guys can get some quality lifts in in the morning, and um, there's science behind it, and there's things that he wants to accomplish with guys throughout the course of the year, and it's it's another morning where you – can activate the nervous system so um we're doing that i don't mind not skating you know last year we had a lot of um actually for the last few years you have a lot of games where you come out you got a couple of guys dinged up you got you know our top guys with lots of minutes so we'd have a lot of optional practices so we'd want to skate in the morning get the power plays zipping it around a little bit and uh, but we've been doing lots of practice, right? Training camps, long time, lots of practice, um, especially for our top guys that don't play a lot of games through exhibition. And I think it's good for them to just kind of relax and focus on the task at hand tonight. Do you envision Shillington or Ludwig, one of those guys, getting a game here soon? I guess is tonight an option for any, either yep. of them? Yeah, it is. I'm not going to give you tonight's lineup, though. We had the question marks yesterday in practice, and doesn't do me any good to give the Islanders our lineup. Jared Pedigua returns tonight for the first time since he left. You guys are kind of linked together in this organization with him leaving and you coming in. Looking back at when you were hired that first season, how crazy was it that protracted you know, preseason training camp for you? Yeah, it was um, – it, well, getting to know everyone is the – is the toughest thing in a, in a short time frame. I actually really liked the way our staff came in and the meetings we had and the preparation through training camp. I thought it was really good training camp. Good start to the year, really, you know. Um, it was when we lost, I think, Varley and EJ right around the same time where things started to fall apart. It was really challenging. But um, I was proud of our guys and our staff for, you know, the work we put in through training camp. But getting... Getting to know the players, the staff, how everyone's everyone operates, the familiarity with the league for me, I think, was was a challenge in in the short amount of time. Um, as far as me and Patty goes, you know, I probably owe him a big hug and a steak dinner. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone has it does what's right for them personally, but for me, it just opened a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Have you ever met or spoken to him since? No. Does it add something extra to this game to, to have him back here, maybe just for the, for the crowd and that, that? Oh, I think, yeah, I think, like, there's obviously the relationship with, you know, the fans in the city of Denver for him would be something special, right? And then there's still some players here that played for him. I don't, I don't know Patty, so, like, for me, it's a, it's a game that we, regardless of who we're playing against, if I had a relationship with him or not, it's a game that we got to focus on winning. Do you have any plans to try to meet him after the game? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> you talked about young guys. You want them to stay with their game. When you're playing with McKinnon and Rand, it might be intimidating to kind of yep. hold on to the puck. Do you have to talk to Kovalenko a little bit? Just yeah, yeah. We did going in, and and I talked to him this morning actually again because I, I thought that line was really good. Got better as the game went on. Actually, um, part of the reason. Um, for that, I think is Kovey got back to what his identity is. He's a skilled player, um, but there. But he's also got this nice mix of grit and determination. A little bit of a power forward. He's a really good four checker. He's pretty good at winning puck battles. Not just because of his uh, tenacity in those battles, but because of his skill, and then still able to make some plays. So I thought he. It, it was simpler for him as the game went on. He looked a little bit more relaxed, like running into people, winning battles, and then 
giving the puck up to Mac. I think if it's just all skill and trying to force plays into Mac and Miko, then it does, usually doesn't turn out well for players. But he did a nice job in that spot. I don't know how much of this you can share or actually even remember, but the day that Patrick Waugh resigned as head coach, was that one of those instances where you reached out to the team after you heard that? Did somebody reach out to you? Like, how did that process go to make you a candidate? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got a call from um, Chris. Um, I didn't see it. It was like I was getting ready. End of summer, I was in South Carolina, and I just signed a new deal to go back with Cleveland. Um, so it was kind of like my last weekend at home with family and friends, and I got a call. You know, so that changed my plans significantly. I basically packed up because I'd been in Cleveland and back a couple times in the summer. And, um, yeah, a lot of my work stuff was there. So I went and hunkered down in Cleveland for a week, um, digging into the Avs, you know, and um, getting prepared for an interview and ended up flying in the next weekend. Prider was already here, right? Did it he was, yeah. It help to, to have that connection? I mean, yeah. obviously he's still here. He's a key yeah. part of your staff, was before also. Yeah, Chris and Nolan were, were both already here, right? So that, that helps for sure. I would spent, I think it was five straight years with Prater already, uh, working with him, and, and same with Chris. So I think Chris was here the year earlier. Um, but any type of familiarity, especially with guys that you – really respect and and um know well and trust i think helps you know it's why you see when um someone takes over a position um that they often bring in guys that they know and trust and so it's like there's a little bit helps with the transition it's seamless thanks, thanks. 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 thanks.